Back in the 60s, when pop and rock were taking over the music scene, British teenagers had to turn to pirate radio stations to hear it. The most famous would broadcast from ships off the English coast. The DJs and their fans are marking the anniversary this weekend. From Essex, Europe correspondent Lisa Miller reports. This is a journey back in time to when pirates ruled the airwaves. He mightn't look like a rebel, but Ian Damon remembers when taking this kind of boat trip was risking trouble. And there it is, Radio Caroline, such an incredible part of British music history. And we're about to go on board. Back when the BBC and a handful of record companies had a monopoly on the wireless and you could hear pop and rock just an hour or two a week, ships like these, based in international waters off the coast of England, brought new music to life. Some people took like astonishing risks with their lives just to ensure that we'd always keep going. The story of these illegal radio stations inspired a movie. And Australian DJ Ian Damon, now 82, was part of it. Pirate Radio began in 1964 with the launch of the first boat. More followed, and then in 1967, the government swooped. We were pioneers in broadcasting. 50 years ago, the Marine Offences Act was introduced, making their work on board illegal. Big old time is three o'clock on Radio London is now closing down. Radio London declared defeat. Its arch rival Radio Caroline limped on. They left an impact. The BBC started its own legal music station within weeks. When that transmitter finished uh, with uh, the playing of uh, Paul Kay saying, uh, now Radio London is closing down, uh, we all had a tear, as you can quite well imagine. The original studio still works, and in the library they've got tens of thousands of original albums. I think it lit a spark. I can remember 50 years ago when I was nine years old listening to this guy on the radio. I never dreamed I'd be standing next to him on a pirate radio ship. <laughs> the ships were anchored about 30 kilometres offshore back then to avoid detection, and the water could be rough. Most of the DJs had never been to sea. You had to be committed to stay on Radio Caroline. People would live here for a minimum of two weeks, eek, to up to a year, and that would send anyone a bit bonkers. You can tell it was pretty basic surroundings. One thing they could always rely on, music. Once a month, they broadcast from the ship on the internet. But 50 years after the government tried to shut them down, they've had a win and just been awarded their very first AM radio licence. No one's going to stop their music now. Lisa Miller, ABC News, off the Essex coast, England.